Uh, so, going about this all wrong. This, uh, this trailer here. <laughs> I think I'm going to name this uh, video Aluminum Trailers Are Potential Death Trap. So I was working on this last week there, the cap. I guess I probably should have started from the bottom up and not the top down. Because I just took that plate off the front. I'll have to go get it and show you. But, wow, well, wait a minute. A friend of mine, Tom, he's got a... Uh, says uh, the aluminum starts to look like alka seltzer and boy was he right so that's that's that steel you know can't can't work uh, you know when you put it on aluminum it just wreaks havoc over time corrodes and that's uh, that's that's pretty corroded actually I took that piece off and this is uh, this is that alka seltzer <laughs> he's talking about it's like it's not quite through blood a lot of it's missing you can't probably see it but it's pretty thick stuff and it's pretty much missing I mean you can see here I think let me see what I'm looking at here can you see, uh, no, I guess you can that, that's what is chain you know is bolted to this bolt that's supposed to be material there it just kind of rotted or disintegrated look at that that's that's pretty bad so I'm gonna have to address this for sure if I'm gonna reuse this even this side, you can't see this side just as bad. Oh boy, it's actually flaking off of there. So, probably should have started with this first because my uh, my initial thing was this. You know, I'm going to take this wood off because I do want to inspect that axle because it's got steel uh, plates under there. So, I'm assuming it's going to be just like this. So now i got to figure this out. Uh, let me go get that piece. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this piece, you know, goes on here like so, and uh, this year, <laughs> last year, well, it was in twice it happened, this thing came uncoupled, right? Uh, the first time it happened, I won't even down now, but first time it happened, I thought I left this, this booger up, you know how that goes. You get to your destination. If you have two sleds on, there's a lot of weight on there, so, you know, I got to my destination and... Uh, and this was up the one one time, so that was my fault, so I thought, but coming back from New Hampshire one time, this, this trailer actually fell off the truck. And I thought, well maybe I left this up. Oh there it goes, it goes down. Uh, but when I you know went back there and tried to pick it up, uh, this was actually down, so then I thought well, when I hit the road it must have slammed down. I was like, man, I got lucky there, you know, the chains did its job and held everything close to, nothing happened to the truck or nothing. The second time this this coupler fell off my ball on the truck. I know why. Everything kind of rotted out in here. The first time it was probably, you know, you see all this is just all rusted and this is supposed to, it actually, you know, there's, it's just, it's just all rotted out. So, I knew I had to get a new piece like this. What I didn't know is all this Alka-Seltzer down here. That's bad news there. So I don't know what I'm going to do to address this, but I got, I got to get one of these anyways, no matter what I'm going to do. And I can't really, can't really cut this old section, the bad section off, even though it would fit here, because uh, I don't want to have it this short. You know, if you're backing up, you don't want to pinch your truck into the trailer and taking corners. If your radius is too, you know, the the, at the corner of that trailer might touch your truck. And I don't have no way. I'm <laughs> even if I could find something this thick or something to shove in there that's thin. Uh, you know, the radius just fits in there like I did on that trailer. Uh, yeah, it's going to be just too much money. This is too thick of stuff, so I'll come up with something sure. i got to get a new, new, one, new one of these. We'll figure that out. But let me take this wood off and see what kind of surprises are under there. Because uh, I don't want to, I don't think I want to fix that if I can. And have the trailer just be total, you know, waste because of, because of the axle or something. So let me take this wood off. And figure this out. Well, this just gets gets better as we go here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna buy an aluminum trailer again. That's for sure. Anyways, let me get going here. Well, all in all, it's not that bad of shape. I expected a lot worse because uh, this plate here that was put on by a friend of mine, Tom, uh, because this had a lot of cracks in it. Cracks, and he added he he uh, added the plate. It used to be just the aluminum coming into each other added the plate and uh, welded that again uh, so I expected other cracks you know if that was cracked there's got to be other cracks that you can't see under the wood and let me take you a little closer here 
So this is one of those props, uh, you know, to help your trailer up. There's there's one on each side, and I put that, you know, it is metal. I'm going to replace that with uh, with aluminum because that looks like it's already coming apart. Uh, can't have steel on aluminum, obviously. At this point, learned my lesson. Uh, but when this trailer was built, they did have steel, and this is the part I was worried about on the axle here. That's a, a steel plate, you know, underneath there to get this. Uh, Steel plate on top too, but that's a big honking piece of steel in there. Of course, it's all corroded. But as I expect, I was expecting cracks. Now I didn't clean it up, and hopefully there is no cracks, and that's still good aluminum. But I'm going to get rid of all that steel. Can't have that in there. That's just going to uh, keep deteriorating and rotting it. And it looks like it's got a little bow to it, like it's, uh, you know what I mean? You know, it's chiseling on this. It's flaking. So that is steel, um, but it's this part. From here to here and it does look like they got some kind of barrier there so that's a bonus I haven't taken it apart yet but hopefully there's no uh, corrosion or alka salsa under there but there's what I was talking about see that looks like a little tiny crack star I didn't worry about that but I was expecting these to be cracked everywhere and it's not so that's good news and I am gonna replace those or uh, they used to be original I don't know if original or not but those springs well, it must be original. I bought the trailer new. Um, they were helper springs, you know, to get that clam up, but they're broken, half missing. So that, that's obviously, not, you know, steel, and that's I could see it corroding behind there. So I'm gonna have to dress that. I'm gonna get rid of these steel bolts in that spring, probably shorten the bolts up for sure, and uh, get something behind this. Stop it! Stop it from turning to Elka Salsa, right? Uh, but I am gonna raise this axle up too. Uh, every year it seems like I gotta replace these tires and that might be a, a cam a caster thing but like I could never feel they're cupped cupped this these these uh, tires are brand new this year or last season and they're already cupped there's not many miles on them at all really I went to New Hampshire a couple times in upstate New York but the outsides are good I mean I could take these to a tire shop and they could flip them around wear them on the other side but there's a reason why they're cupping like that and I don't think there's any adjustments on these tires as far as, uh, you know, shimming it one way or the other, toe in or toe out or camber, or any adjustment like that. doesn't look like it anyways. I'll have to address that, but I'll show you what's going on over here. This, uh, well, i got two minutes left on this. That's actually a tire wear mark. <laughs> so i got to raise that axle. i got some ideas on how to do that, but it's burnt into the wood there, tread marks. <laughs> so I'm not going to use this wood. I guess if you're in a tight budget you could flip it around but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna uh, yeah. get some new I get a full face I was wearing his goggles here and uh, you can see, see the blade got destroyed too man everything just went pow um, so cutting through these bolts you know there's so much rush jack I need to make that out it's cutting the end of that bolt off and the thing just exploded <laughs> I mean uh, this uh, corrosion that's on there you know was full the whole thing was just full of corrosion. As soon as I got through that bolt, the whole thing sounded like a gunshot. Pow! Uh, like it was under pressure. You know, these things are fully extended. It isn't like uh, there's weight on this that, you know, the torsion bars are squatted or whatever. I don't know what that was. I'm assuming just rust jack. But I gotta go get a full face and some full gloves and friggin' body equipment. <laughs> that thing jumped up and uh, it wasn't even done cutting all the way through yet. It just exploded. Huh. Rust Jack. Yeah, no drama there. I'm telling you, the first one just went pow! But you could see, oh boy. This is what I was afraid of. Damn. You know? Elk is Seltzer City. You could see that it, uh, it's bent. It was jacking up so hard, it's corrosion wise look at that here I thought this was a barrier it's just aluminum corroded aluminum you can see the uh, the actual steel plate is friggin bent up jacked up big time like I said when I cut that oh crap getting all this stuff here when I cut that off man it was a loud pow <laughs> so man this is the reason I'm cutting this off first is because if this 
trailer is not salvageable. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Then, uh, you know, then there's no sense fixing the tongue. That's well, too bad. I'm sure, that's all corroded under there, too. So you got it thin up here and thin up here. Good news, I don't see any cracks. So I might be able to reinforce this. I don't know, but it's definitely a, a major, uh, <laughs> a major, you know, rail here, and it's it, your air axle's hooked to it. So I gotta go get an air hammer and see if I can drive that down. Or just keep whacking it with a hammer. Sorry about the noise. You really got to keep up with this stuff. I don't know how you're going to keep up with this with the wood on here. You're not going to see any of it. You know, it's it's covered. Uh, but that being said, I got to you know I got to treat this way better than they did. Steel on aluminum is just you, you can't do it. You just can't do it. Anyways, let me keep going here. So I just drove out these. Uh, I doubt they're stainless, but these bolts that are uh, this washer is paper thin now. I mean, I'm sure it was touching, uh, and you could just see. So, the, uh, you know, you buy aluminum trailer because you're like, yeah, it'll never rust. <laughs> but they didn't say anything about corroding. Uh, so I want to see if I could get this knocked out. Yeah, that comes right out. I hope the bottom of that isn't not anywhere near the top. This is a big honking piece of metal, man. Just one big, thick-ass piece of steel. Oh, I don't know. I gotta get. I gotta get this jacked up and see if. Uh... So that must be galvanized. Oh boy, I could feel the Alka Seltzer down there. <laughs> I could feel the Alka Seltzer. It is pretty thick stuff, so I've got that going for me. I don't know if it's an eighth of a way through, you know, one eighth. I don't know what I got going on here. I'm gonna have to get the other side off and flip this, flip this upside down. I guess to get a good look at it, because I, I definitely don't want to put it on the road if it's just gonna, you know what I mean? If these get, uh, I, I'm really surprised that it ain't cracked anywhere. So I, I'm happy about that. But if, if you keep letting this go, something's got to give. You know, there's gonna be a weak point here. Oh man. So. I got her flipped upside down so it'll be easy to work to. I'll go over here in a second, but um, what I found out over here is, uh, you know, because this tire over here is hideous. It's brand new. It's had uh, one season on it. I say brand new, but I, it, one of them was long distance, but the the tire shouldn't be wearing. You shouldn't have to get tires every day. And I was like, how do you adjust this? And I don't think there was a way, but turns out there is a way. Uh, these brackets, you see how that hole, it's, it's oval, oblong. You know, not, you know, because it wore, but that allows it to shift one way or the other, you know. So I think uh, over time the, with the rust jack, you know, it just kind of shifted thing or maybe it was just screwed up from the beginning. I don't remember wearing out tires this fast, though. So when I get this back together, I'm going to have to take in consideration that that one tire can be more forward than the other. And I believe that one tire is way more forward because, uh, you know, it's just wearing out. I, I, I got to see if my tire company will, you know allow that to be flipped around the tire but anyways at least to my words that that axle is pretty heavy but i gotta tell you man this thing is uh i'm like yeah it's aluminum no problem i'll flip it over yeah man i think i felt something shift in a lower region if you know what i mean so let me take you over here and see what uh see what's doing i think it's gonna be okay actually um the the bottom is it's not too bad i'm probably missing ugh, that's actually a good sixteenth of an inch. I was going to say a thirty-second, but that is a pretty good dip there. Um, but there's still meat left. So the top, the bottom here, and the top got compromised. There's no cracks. So I'm, I'm happy with that. So I think I'm just gonna. Uh, I don't know. I got to think about it. I got to clean it up first. See, see if I get better. But this way, with it upside down, now I can get to everything. That that wire used to go in, inside the tube and. One year I had to put it outside because it was in a hurry, so I could put it back inside the rail. It's going to be easier upside down. I got to get rid of this stupid honker here that's just probably corroded right through. Actually, I'm going to take that up next and see if there's a big honking hole there. 
Uh, other than that, I was looking around. There's no cracks. Oh, and I can get this uh, this sled carrier here, this ramp carrier. I see welds, three welds there. I can cut that off. That's going to be some good stock that I can use for for whatever spacers or whatever. And I busted that off. That ear that hooks the the trailer on uh, the cap busted off. It was bent anyways, and uh, it's actually kind of thinner. You know, this holds your cap on. <laughs> Uh, just because when I was dragging it over here, I just my weak ass couldn't get it up and I had dropped it So here's where I'm at and this thing I'm gonna make that aluminum this piece of steel that you can see it's jacked That's got like 10 minutes left <laughs> So I'm gonna have to take that off and I'm sure that's all pitted and Nasty in there. And this is a pretty important piece down here. So I see it's still welded good. So there's that so instead of being a structural square it might be a c channel at this point but i think it'll hold up and there's what tom had to do he had to weld these cracks of course it's upside down now but like i said he had added that plate and whatnot all right so i think i'm good i, I think this is going to be structurally fine so i'm going to start rebuilding it flip it back over and get some wood on there address these axles. i might put the axle on upside down i don't know i gotta because because i gotta string it i gotta make sure that that one you know tires not forward from the other and when it's on the ground that's going to be problematic so if, i think if it's upside down and i put that axle on you know with the wheels up this way i can uh, jockey you know what i mean take measurements string it whatever i gotta do make sure everything's square because the holes themselves are square but i have a feeling like i said everything would with, with the jack going on i mean they might not be exact holes anymore they might be uh I don't know, but as you can see in the axle, it had the oblong hole, so it could definitely get uh, out of whack. So I'm kind of glad that there's no major cracks. I'll deal with this uh, alka seltzer stuff here. Of course, the tongue. I gotta take. Uh, I gotta get that. That that's that's probably next. I'm gonna take these off next just to see if the integrity is good. Wow, wait, man. So trying to get this. Uh, you know, this. Uh, it, it used to be a spring that had this. You know to help this trailer up when it was weighed on it ain't worked in years and it's kind of busted but it's been there so long well it's a 2005 trailer that's where i'm at this is taking the longest so far so i just got this cut free and i think this is aluminum but look at how corroded this is i mean there was so much gunk in there it's all on the ground now but you know i keep cutting the spring apart and i'm pretty sure this is aluminum but it's all corroded and this bolt is still solid, seized in there. So I got to get that out, and that's the last, whoop, last piece of the puzzle. Of course, I got to do the other side. But so once I, I mean, this is, uh, it's got the elk seltzer here too, and there's some pretty big pits. But I think I can address that with something. But banging on this thing ain't doing nothing. So I got to see if uh, I go get my. Uh, air hammer or something see if I can drive this home one way or the other because I need this out I need to replace that bolt with a with a new one I mean this thing still did uh, you know it, it it still there was no problem with it uh, you know tilting obviously this wasn't moving in here anymore it's uh, you know this piece where the bolt passes through here that was the part that was allowing to move this is just seized in there but I still I can't cut that flush now because I'm afraid if I cut it flush I need to get that out of there so whatever I have to do get a big old sludge hammer or something see if that thing will budge oh wait man I don't know I mean if the sludge hammer ain't gonna poke that through it's just a bolt you know it's still corroded on there it's not coming <laughs> it's not letting loose I need this bolt out of there it's so corroded that uh, I mean, there's no weight on this thing, you know. I can, you know, I, I can rope. So it's not like it's binding because there's weight on it. But I gotta tell you, I hit this thing pretty good, pretty goddamn hard, and it didn't budge. Sorry about the sound. Oh, finally! That's so corroded. It actually moved. It moved in a good inch. I'm gonna have to, uh, I don't know, get some lube in there. That thing's got to come out of there. It's supposed to be just a bolt shaft goes through there. Obviously, it's taken. Uh, 
swelled up to a, well, let me keep working on it. At least it budged. All right, so this, I got this thing up in the air now. I could try to drive it home. I'm just going to leave it, I'm going to try to get the other side. The only thing I could think of, you see this, how this is welded on the end there? This has got to be one chunk, one thick-ass piece, chunk of aluminum in here for support. Because this, there's no way you can't just pound this out. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So it's got to be tweaked a little bit and just not making it through. This has got to be a solid piece. I mean, it just has to be. There's no way. I, I mean, I just you, you put a pair of vice grips on this, nothing. No matter what you do with this thing, it's seized. So once I get it on the ground, on a bench, it's just too difficult to work with. But I got it free from this side. Now I got to work on that side. I really probably ought to start drinking. <laughs> what the hell is this guy doing? Yeah. If somebody tells you you can't weld aluminum to steel, they're wrong. All you got to do is drill a 3 8 hole in that aluminum and then put a 3 8 steel bolt through that 3 8 hole in the aluminum and wait 15 years. That's all you got to do. Permanently welded. Can't get it apart. It's unbelievable. Well, it's flush. Cut it flush. Now that bolt. About to put 12, pound, 12 tons of pressure on this thing. I still can't believe it won't come out of there. I did lube it up while I was. Wow, it's not even budging. Oh my God! I think the whole press shifted. <laughs> Holy crap, man. So, the press wasn't working. This thing, this I was pressing it this way, right? So I was just trying to hammer on this freaking thing. I was going to town and I broke my hammer. My hammer's broke. I don't get it, man. It's almost like, it, it, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It is just literally the craziest thing I've ever seen. Well, not really. Uh, that show Legion, that's pretty crazy. But I can't believe this. I, there's nothing I can do here. So, I guess I'm going to break something. Uh, so I got it in a vice here. <coughs> I don't know what to do. This is just going to mushroom this, right? So it will never go through, even if it starts moving. But if it does start moving, I don't know what to do here. I mean, it would take me about, you know, three or four drill bits. I got, I, I got some new 3 16 drill bits that'll probably do a pilot hole, but I mean, this pin should come out of here. It's not even a pin, it's a bolt. So I'm gonna try to whack on it. If it does move and go down, this'll be mushroomed. I'll have to saw it off and then try to keep going that way. It's crazy, man, just absolutely crazy. That is just nuts. Oh, baby! Yeah, that moved quite a bit. All right! I still don't know why it didn't come out. Shit. I should go back up, because this is mushroom. There's no way that's going to fit through. I think I'm out of the woods though. I think I'm out of the woods. Yeah, I just cut it off. So I guess what, what alarms me is, uh, it's still way too hot, is uh, a 12 ton press, right? Didn't budge it. Didn't budge it. Twelve ton press didn't budge it, but this is what was going on. Inside there was a bent, right? Oof, still hot. I'm always touching hot shit. Can't believe that. So it was bent inside. Oh my gosh! I guess that's why it didn't come out. It actually looks like a pretty clean hole. Right, here's a map with this. So this ton, if I press on it a little bit, you see that. Uh, 
That is the big honking piece of aluminum. You know, it's solid. And it's a half inch hole going through, and it's not wild out. I put a drill bit in there, clean it up a little bit. But unfortunately, where this thing sits at the pivot point, you know, there's A, there's a little bit of space there on both sides. So just putting a bolt through would be fine. Uh, crap, I think there's another jet going over. Uh, you know, but this piece here is hollow inside, and this is way bigger than, you see, a half inch hole. Just because over here, this, we got wild out. So this bolt goes through like this, you know. Sends it through like this, but I think over the years, you know, this 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 is going to be too sloshy in there. Both sides are wound out. So I got to, in other words, this hole here, see how big it is, and the same thing on the other side right here is uh, just as big. So I'm wondering if this uh, going down the road, you know, push, pull, 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 you know, whatever. So I have no way of filling that in or putting a sleeve in there. And friend Tom, he's a professional uh, welder fabricator deal. He's saying this should be like this, solid piece. So because uh, when you tighten this bolt down, you want you don't want this to crush, right? And the fact that it's it's getting wound out. So I got an idea. Okay, so I think I come up with the answer. First of all. Uh, friend of mine Tom uh, to, you know he's saying you can use oak to separate uh, aluminum from uh, uh, you know instead of uh, steel using steel plates for that axle for instance or even steel screws or whatever you can use oak to separate aluminum and uh, I thought about it and, and then I asked him about can you use pressure treated wood because I got a lot of pressure treated wood 4x4 four four post I was going to cut some pressure treated to this diameter square here, shove her in, you know, and uh, do a bushing across for, you know, so you'll, you'll see in a second. But he said uh, it's a good question. He actually didn't know. So I looked that up. No pressure treated. Nah, can't use it. So as we know, this tongue has those blocks in there, aluminum blocks. That ain't going nowhere. Even though there's a steel screw going through them, I'm going to have to, you know, treat the steel screw. Couldn't find the stainless. Uh, I'll, I'll crap it up with... Um, uh, never sees or whatever I gotta do, but here's what I come up with. So I went to the store and bought a 4x4 four, four four, uh, Douglas fir and cut it up to exact size. Now the this looks like a 2x3, uh, three, but a 2x3 is like well, uh, what is it? One and one and a half by two and a half uh, diameter in this square hole here for the aluminum is one and five eighths by two and five eighths. So it'll be eight inch off, and I want it as tight as possible. So this is what I came up with. Um, I'm going to shove this in the rails, and this is going to go all the way to, to here. Right, so that's going to have, or actually, faster. It's going to be to here. A little, a little bit further, actually. Little, the holes are already lined up. So, I've got a whole chunk of wood in there, so it's not going to be able to uh, have that crush effect. Because uh, when I clamp this uh, tongue down to this, you know, because that those holes were there. Let me take it a little closer. Those holes there were uh, were bigger than five eighths right here. They were wild out. The tongue is okay. It's still it's still um, I mean it's still a half inch the tongue. This is more like five eighths and bigger in some spots. So what I did is I drilled. I put a bushing in this wood, right? So now. Uh, between the wood and the bushing when this is inside here you get what I'm saying now I can tighten everything up and uh, there'll be no chance of this wowing out anymore because it's going to be steel screw going through the steel uh, bushing insert so let me pound that in and I got the uh, I drilled holes down there for the axle bolt going this way I'm not going to put any in inserts there because that that aluminum was pretty good and uh, I don't think I could find an insert this long I guess I can use bushings like those uh, three-quarter inch bushings and just have them on both sides uh, I'll think about that but uh, but in the meantime that's that's what I come up with and this way even if that rots or cracks or whatever it's gonna have you know it's gonna have wood it's it's hard I already that's why it's all darkened in spots uh, I already jammed it in there it's a tight fit I poke it back out once I made my marks and uh, put that insert in so I think that's what I'm gonna do 
and as far as the uh, the axle nut, I mean uh, the axle bolt holes going through, let me think about. Uh, let me see if I got some quarter bushings uh, laying around. I don't know. I, th I don't think it's going to matter because what I got plans for on the top here, it's not going to matter because that that stuff's pretty good. It's not pitted as much as as uh, the other stuff, so I don't think I'm going to worry about that. You know, it's going to have a solid piece of wood in there anyway. So let me jam this in here and show you. Well, I got to do the other side too. I got to uh, I got to make the other side. But I had to take this four by four through a table saw. You know, get the exact dimensions. Unfortunately, a one by three would have been a too sloppy, at least for me. Plus. What I have in mind for that tongue over there, because it's all corroded on the end, that same 4x4 I saved a 2 feet section. I'm going to cut that to 3x3, three three. that's a 3x3 three three hole, and shove that in and have that as a nice uh, uh, barrier for, you know, so it won't go anywhere, but you'll see. Hang on. Well, she's almost there. It is a tight fit, so there's a lot of whacking involved, but I almost got her aligned perfect. There's that bushing, just a few more more wax, love taps, or whatever. A little more. Can't see. Can't see, but that's close. That's close. I'm thinking just a tad more. Too far. Let me go get a smaller hammer. Yeah, I gotta get a tad more. Use a sledgehammer, so it's kind of hard to control. Uh, that's good. I got uh, from here. Oh, the camera angle looks a little different, but I'm gonna go get a bolt. So now it doesn't make a difference. Send this bolt through. Oh, I got. I see there's a little nick there. Must have hit something going through here. I see a little nick. I have to burr that out because this is a tight fit too. I'm gonna screw the threads up. There it goes. Alright, so let's push it. There we go, the door. So, now there's a big chunk of wood in there. So even if I, uh, let me back this up a little bit. Even if I, uh, you know, have to drill something through or, or whatever, it's going to, you know, there's no way this is going to crush it. It's, <laughs> it's solid. Plus this, now, with this bushing in here, it's not going to wire that wood out. See this hole here? This hole's supposed to be the size of that hole. You know, just over time. Everything got just chewed up and wowed out. The other, the tongue part has that big block of aluminum in there, so it's no chance of that uh, wowing out anytime soon, maybe a hundred years. But, uh, so now this is going to be, when this comes through, it'll come this way, right? Or might send it this way. I don't know. I'll decide that. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. Now, and to prevent, that's, uh, uh, I'll put it on there already. Uh, never sees but I have another idea I'm gonna leave that never sees on there let me show you this other idea hold on a second all right so I don't know why the manufacturers don't do this to help things out but you know you got this steel bolt steel can't talk to them the best bet is to use stainless but like I said I couldn't find a six inch bolt that was stainless that wasn't like 1.5 million dollars I mean they had some big stuff there but I'm not paying like 15 dollars for a bolt so these are uh, nylon washers yeah, I always see that's a hardware stuff. I'm like, who the hell would use a nylon washer? It's stupid. Well, turns out there's a use for them. So this this is the way it would normally go, yeah? And this washer will take up any, any gap there, but I'm going to put this over here, like show. See what I'm saying? Now nothing touches. Plus we have any C's, and I'll put some any C's on the bolt itself through there, because it's steel on steel. That, well, they'll talk together, but I'll still put some any C's in there, so there's no chance of that season. And that's that, right? Then you go to the tongue on the other side. Same thing, nylon washer. It's going to be beautiful. Beautiful. That's where I'm at. Let me put this together show you what I'm talking about. Uh, she's together, so like I said, I uh, put uh, slattered it up with uh, anti-seize. Right? Put the bolt, metal washer, plastic, or nylon washer. Sent it through. And uh, same thing on the other side there. Uh, came through. Same deal on the other side. Well, shit, you probably can't see that's too dark. But then I cut off the excess bolt and just peened it over with a, a ball or a hammer just to screw the threads up on the end. So if that nut, it's a lock washer on there, but if the nut decides, you know, because it's a ratcheting effect. But right now everything's free flowing, it's just uh, going around on this pin. So nothing's moving, the nut's not moving. 
the way it's supposed to be, but in the future if something decides to seize up or that bolt tries to work, I mean technically my, uh, you know, I should have just got some uh, line, nylon lock nuts, but uh, you know, I don't want to spend any money on anything, so I just use shit that I have laying around, even though it's uh, the, the wood I had to buy, but uh, those bushings there, you know, anytime I take something apart junk wise, scrap it, I'll take off some good stuff like bushings or, you know, you know, just crap that I think I might come in handy and it always does. So, uh, the tongue's done anyways. And like I said, over here on the end, I'm going to take the rest of that 2 by or 4x4, four four, cut a piece off, and cut it down to 3x3, three three, shove it in there so I got new, new fresh meat to deal with. And I might, I don't know, decide to even cut a piece and slide it all the way down this tube. That's part of the tongue too, where those holes are. That's where... Uh, you know my brackets got to go for the tilt uh, the props there but I'll see what happens let me continue I'm closing in anyways I got the tongue licked and it's fully secure now way better than it was originally so I'm happy with that so. okay so this this uh, axle sits on of course you know this is upside down but it was directly steel on aluminum this steel Look at this, look at this uh, corrosion. Now this is an inch piece of thick, inch thick piece of steel as a spacer to get those, uh, the axle up an inch higher off the uh, bottom of the trailer, which I understand that, but they use steel. And look at this piece, the top plate where steel bolts go through aluminum, it's actually bent. It's bent to the way that when I cut these uh, bolts off, this thing popped and, and basically shot the, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it had so much pressure on it and it bent this, you know, that's a pretty good thick steel. It bent this steel up from just corrosion, right? Just just like rust jack, but it's corrosion from aluminum. So, um, I'm not going to use that, obviously. I was just thinking, why would they put steel on aluminum knowing that... Uh, I understand the axle. You can't have an aluminum axle. I guess you could, but... Uh, but you got to have some kind of protection there. You know, steel, it's not your friend, it's not, it's not, so I got an idea. So this is what I, I'm going to come up with. This, this piece of uh, oak is uh, eight bucks at Home Depot, which is incredible, right? Because I'm, I'm getting pegged with acorns here. I got oaks everywhere. Eight bucks for this little guy. And you know, I got oak trees everywhere for nothing. Just don't have a way to <laughs> mill it. So check this out. So I'm, this is aluminum, by the way. This, uh, let me show you. This, this aluminum I use all the time. These are old low bars that don't work anymore to, to pump action or whatever's wrong with them. And I'll use a piece, like I cut a piece out of there for, uh, I don't know, something. And, uh, you know, so it comes in handy. This is aluminum, it's just got paint on it. But check this out. This is, uh, this is gonna be oak, which, which is gonna be fine. According to my friend Tom, they still use like oak as a separator between uh, commercial trailers for the, for the bed and the frame. Uh, so that's kind of what gave me the idea here. I mean, I use that Douglas fir for, you know, for the rails over there, but uh, they don't have oak that is, you know, that I can afford anyways, that is uh, that thick for, for what I did over there. So Douglas fir is fine, but look at this. Look at this, baby. Oh, yeah, tight fit, but it goes right in there. See, it's going in. I'll slam that home, but that is the exact... The exact fit for let me take it back out because I'll show you what I'm doing here. The exact fit, this is all aluminum. And what I'm gonna do is let me set this up a little bit. Uh, and that's gonna be my spacer. And it's gonna have this uh, piece of oak, this nice piece of oak that costs eight dollars inside of it, and then when the axle uh, it'll go on top of that, but it'll be that's the only uh, drawback, it's still gonna be it's galvanized, but rusty galvanized, but the axle is still steel. So what I'm going to do is paint that with that, um, what do you call it, uh, plastic coat, you know? Or I could throw Gorilla Tape over that to stop stop it from, you know, having this uh, reaction. Uh, or, you know, I, I'll do something, but it'll be aluminum on aluminum with the oak going through there. So there's no, no worries of this, uh, you know, square tubing crushing when the axle's on. Especially when you tighten down the bolts because it's going to be solid oak inside of there so I can cinch it down as far as I need and the top plate in other words uh, when it's uh, the top plate instead of using this steel thing 
I'm gonna cut, uh, you can see it over there, where that uh, angle iron is on the, on the trailer. I'm gonna cut a piece of that off because I don't use it. That is uh, for a ramp underneath, and I don't have a ramp. I've got a clamshell and it's a tilt trailer, so I'll cut a piece of that angle iron. It's, it's really uh, thick stuff, and uh, use that as a top plate, drill some holes. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think it's gonna come out beautiful. So let me do that and I'll show you the end result. Oh, hey. Oh, I thought it was Superman. <laughs> uh oh, experiment time. So, traditionally, when I cut aluminum, I just use uh, one of my favorite tools, you know, just a cutoff wheel. Uh, but, unless you have like a six or an inch, eight inch uh, grinder, you know, you're going to have to make two cuts to get through uh, something that's, you know, longer than your blade. So, Tom says he's a professional welder. Uh, fabricator I think I pointed it out 19 times but uh he says you can just use a circular saw so I'm like really he goes yeah it's almost like it's made for it. carbide teeth and you know blade and whatnot so I got this uh, shitty saw here that I'm not afraid to do some experimenting with and I actually just put a new blade on there but I took it off and put this old blade on there because I'm assuming you don't need a sharp blade because uh, it's just gonna rip through this but it's still got all this carbide on there so let me do an experiment. Uh, he did say suit up because there's a lot of shrapnel. <laughs> so, so we'll see what happens. Uh. Yeah. No drama. No drama for your mama. That's almost like a perfect cut. I likes. I uh. I'm going to use this from now on. <laughs> so, look at that, huh? That came out pretty good. That thing is shoved in there. It's nice and tight. So now i got to drill my holes for where the axle bolts go through. And you know, just thinking about it. So I have, I have it marked out, but I'm like, the one tool I don't have is a drill press. And every time I need a drill press, I'm like, ah, screw it. It's just this one time, you know? i got to get a drill press. Because then I could just send it down right through. Because now, you know, I, I took this uh, took this plate, marked the center hole, punched it on this side. But there's no way you could just do that on the other side. So you have to, you know, do the old, you know, run around line and get the center line. So I'm going to drill a little bit this way halfway through, halfway through this way with a little pilot hole. See if I come out okay. And then uh, drill the half inch hole. It's the only thing I could do, other than, and they're cheap, these uh, drill presses nowadays, especially like a little cheap Ryobi, 100 bucks. I got a good one, a little tabletop version. But I, I do like this, this came out good. That is sweet. You can't get that out of there. Yeah, there's one big clunking, solid piece of inch and a half. If you were to get this inch and a half aluminum, I don't know where you would get it, but uh, I can't get it anywhere. So this is a perfect solution. And I don't know about just using, you know, oak without it encased. I guess if you just did use the oak, you'd have to treat it with something. I don't know if water affects oak, you know, s splits or whatever, but this is what I'm doing anyways. So let me, uh, let me show my luck at uh, using a drill, a hand drill, and getting this done. All right, so I think I'm done here, more ways than one. Uh, so this came out good. So as long as those uh, factory fellas at uh, Caravan have their holes the same on each side, I'm good to go. Good, got a friend. What's up, buddy? You lost? Where's all your friends? <laughs> so anyways, I got this, uh, this uh, booger here, kind of, uh, before I put the axle, I want to tend to this because um, it's just easier to get through upside down, obviously. So I moved the channel up, or I, I cut them uh, those uh, things for the ramps off, the angle iron, it's a nice angle iron. And uh, so instead of the steel plate that was here, where the bad holes were, I moved it up a little bit, which actually gave me more lifting power. Uh, so, so that came out all right, so now I can... So, like I said, uh, if I take this over to New York, maybe my friend can put a bead of weld on there, it'd be a little better than uh, pop rivets, but those should hold. Anyways. Let me, I think the next thing, uh, I was going to work on his tongue first, but I'd rather do that upside right. Um, so, I guess, let me flip this over, 
and attack that axle. Alright, so I'm about to and jack this axle up. So what I got here is, uh, you know, my spacer that we made and uh, got the bolt. So before I jack this up, I put a layer of Gorilla Tape on that. First of all, I ground that uh, rust off of that axle flange. Put a layer of uh, Gorilla Tape around it and uh, also sprayed the bo bottom of this. Uh, it's, it's painted originally, this aluminum casing with the wood there. But I put a uh, layer, a couple of layers of uh, that plastic coat to help the barrier there. So hopefully the steel will never talk to that aluminum. Uh, and the steel bolts going into the aluminum. Uh, first, I, I've got them poly, uh, poly washers. The pl I'll show you in a second. But uh, so going up here, I still have to make an aluminum plate up here. But I want to jack this axle up because I may need to jack this axle in or out or up or forward to get the. So uh, I don't scrub my tires, but um, let me get those jacked up and see what's doing. But so everything's in place, and then uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do for this. Oh, the steel bolts are going through the aluminum, yeah, and they might touch a little bit on the hole. But remember, there's wood inside there, so it's all one solid piece of uh, one by or two by three. I don't know. I forgot the dimensions, but it's pretty pretty solid. So I ain't worried about that or the steel corroding the aluminum. Uh, so let me get it jacked up and then put some uh, a plate on the top and get this booger so I can at least roll it around. Alright, so uh, something like that. Now technically I don't need a, a top plate because now that's all solid solid wood in there so there's no crush factor. I can draw that down as tight as I want and there's no crush. But because I cut that angle iron off, I mean this is good stuff. I'm just going to plop that over it, drill some holes and this will be a top okay, plate. So now that I can wheel this thing around again. Um, so I was going to elect not to put a top plate on that because that, that beam there has that six foot piece of, uh, you know, what I shoved in there for, from the end here. Uh, and it's all solid, so I, I'm like, I don't even need a top plate. Uh, but I am going to ultimately put a top plate in there. I've already got the pieces cut out, but I wanted to show you this first. So this is the last piece of the puzzle here. And I can call this, uh, this trailer fixed, well, minus the, the plywood, and i got to do some electrical work, but... Minus that, this is the last piece of the puzzle, and kind of the important one. This is where I almost uh, lost my trailer on an interstate there, flyover. I don't know if I told that story because it's been a couple days now. But uh, So this tongue here, I thought, okay, it's just like the rest of it. It's got that Alka-Seltzer deer. Let me clean that up. And uh, because this coupler was put on there, there it is. Where is it? Because this coupler was... Uh, put on there at the factory. It was. Well, let me get out in the sunlight here. Sunlight, it's raining out, but uh, you know it has that same corrosion deal, right? We started, you know, just falling apart the aluminum. So this does not look like it's crushed at all. You know the walls inwards, but this end over here was. It was crushed in a little bit, poked in that way, and I thought maybe the bolts were, you know, perhaps tighten too too much and it, and it just which is possible but this doesn't look bent uh, so then I thought well let me get let me get in there with a uh, little air hammer from a from a bolt hole from the other side and poke it out and then <laughs> this is what happened so cleaning this stuff up and this is why I'm changing my mind on this top plate over here so cleaning this Elker seltzer up uh, it didn't really reveal anything other than you know, miss a little bit missing material here, and you, and I could feel this is a dent here, but I'm not worried about that. What I am worried about after poking through and getting getting this metal straight again, because I plan on doing the same thing with uh, cutting this four by four piece of Douglas fir down to fit in here to make it a solid piece again. So when when I run bolts through, uh, you know, it's going to be this the, the entire distance here, two two feet. Actually, two feet's probably beyond this plate, but uh, so then everything will be rock solid tight. And what I have in mind is taking. Oh boy! I know I'm all over the place, but let me show you what I'm. My plan is first, and show you what happened. But first, getting a cut, cutting the wood in there, putting the wood in there. And this is uh, I bought a, a more heavy duty one. The other one was a, a three three thousand. Uh, pound uh, cl class 3 I think it was and this is a 6,000 pound class 4 so it's a little thicker but my plan is to put this like this and using the same bolt holes 
as originally, but as you can see, you know, with the Elka Seltzer and things might be wowed out. I'm actually going to cut this old one off, you know, just, just cut this part off and use, weld this old one to the new one, and I'll have two more bolt holes that is in, going to be in, in fresh meat here, right, plus that 4x4, four four, it's going to be a 3x3 three three and when I cut it down. It's going to be in there, so I've got fresh meat with a solid piece. I could crank it right down. Two good bolts that are going to hold it on. The weld, it's going to, even if this fails, it's going to be okay. You know, I think it'll be okay without it, but I'm just doing that for, for overkill. But here's what I, what I found by poking that out, and then I'll zoom in a little closer. It was a hairline crack, and I didn't realize it, and that, you know, it's possible that there's hairline cracks in the alka seltzer from just grinding it, you couldn't see, but poking it with the air hammer exposed it, and let's see if I can zoom in and show you. You see that crack on the edge there? It was there, but like I said, grinding it, it just didn't expose it. It just kind of, you know, meshed everything in there. All right, so uh, I ran the wiring in there because uh, you don't want to forget that, and also I ran, uh, you know, this is my... 4x4 four four cut down to whatever it is, 2 and a half, two and 5 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths. But I had to make that channel for the, uh, for the electric, so there's that. Uh, but then I was like, uh, this, this, this was bent a little bit. So I go to take it in there, and I'm like, I'm so glad I'm doing this. Look at this. It is so corroded. That piece actually fell out. So there's another crack I wasn't aware of. So I'm going to drive this sucker home. And uh, like I said... Make sure my nothing is impeding. So I'm gonna drive this home. Right, so I've got it flush, but uh, like I said, you just can't see anything until it's exposed. And now it's exposed. Even though I ground that down, I didn't see that the first time, but there's another crack. Look at that. So basically this part that cracked right off, and this part, I mean, the other side's good great. I was uh, you know, poking at it and so this side is good. But you can't just hold your, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it is a compromise. So we got a crack here on the top, a crack here, doesn't quite make it over to here, but this one made it from here to here. So, you know, how long would it have been before this whole thing fell apart? And again, now, now that there's a piece of two, two foot long, you know, solid piece of mass, and I'm going to bolt everything together, it's, it's not an issue. Uh, so I just cut this uh, this old coupler uh, apart with uh, you know because like I said I was going to do uh, join the two together. The old coupler is on the left there of course, but I just weld them together. Uh, the reason why they're mismatched is the the old one was a class uh, two. I think it's rated at uh, I, I think three thousand pounds uh, capability. The new one's a class four, six thousand pound rated, you know, but the axle's only 2,000 pounds, so it really didn't matter, but uh, it was the same price for a big honker, so uh, now that's welded together, uh, the last thing I got to do is uh, put it on here, and, you know, I, I ground everything down the best I could, the alka Stelser is still, you know, in parts where the original, you know, bolts were, well, I didn't drill the holes yet through the wood and, and, and stuff, but, so, with this new piece the way it is, the new one's going to go in the original bolt holes, but it's also going to have, uh, you know, those two more that I have to drill right through everything. So it's going to be one one big solid, uh, instead of six inches now, it's going to be like more like ten inches, this whole piece here. <laughs> Grab a hold of that, so that's, that's what i got left to do. Alright, I don't know where we left off, but, so this tongue is done, so basically uh, the three inch piece of wood there fills this whole tube up goes back to about here so it's about two and a half feet of solid wood that's the new coupler and then the old coupler I welded to the new coupler and uh, put tape uh, gorilla tape around the aluminum because that is steel and then while well, I welded the chains on there uh, just because I didn't want to keep drilling holes into the new stuff. The uh, original way it was, he, they had 
this was the coupler that the two bolt holes were here but then they had two more bolt uh, little little nuts but you know drilled through the aluminum I didn't feel the need for that so I just welded it as tongue uh, and then treated it with that plastic coat uh, uh, plastic coat stuff it's not paint it's uh, that rubber stuff so that should protect it for a while and of course ran a new new cord through there I think I showed that I'm not sure so that's that that came out good and um, where's the other thing oh yeah the, these uh, angle iron there so that's reinforced just in case there's any issue with the cracks and oh yeah these things so I, I had some angle iron left matter of fact uh, that's all I got left out of all that all that stuff but you can see this stuff pretty big honk and stuff so it was good good to have and I made these uh, you know I cut that angle iron in half just like and then shaped it to well let me show you let me show you what it was which is kind of weird the way they did it not weird but so this is the original one this actually holds your friggin clamshell on this little fella here <laughs> and it had some uh, pitting going on both sides and it was looking like it was getting wild out and this is the only one that was left the other one broke cracked so like I said I used that angle iron but look at it, it's like almost twice the thickness and uh, a new hole here because this is I don't know if you can see that's a little bit wild out plus over there on the trailer I didn't drill the holes yet so when I put this cap back on it's going to be a perfect fit and this this that's like solid man you can't bend this this you can bend when I was taking it off it, it got bent and I tried to bend it back and it cracked right off the other side so oh and also the way they did it I don't know if you can see that see this has a ridge here I don't know what they were thinking like it, it's cockeyed it, it won't sit flat so that's why I made mine a little skinnier so it fits under this uh, this lip here and of course drilled out the holes use the same stainless bolts but uh, so it's, it's gonna be way better I just can't believe they would put it put it cockeyed like that and then just bolt it down <laughs> it's like seriously uh, anyways so that's where I'm at with that uh, I think the only thing I got left I think I already showed that angle there uh, that's it I just got the wood left I'm gonna put the wood on oh and I'm running uh, new wires just because I have a lot of wire and you know there was a few lights out that I could never find you know because it runs you know, it sneaks around there's a bunch there's a, there's one there uh, so instead of trying to find out where this ground problem is you know it's probably something shorted out or the green crusty kind of thing and I'm just gonna run all new wire I mean the woods off I got the wire so I'll do that I'm not gonna run it through this uh, aluminum conduit it's probably in here somewhere you know all corroded so I'll take all this crap apart and that's it <clears throat> I think I'm done here I'm just gonna put wood on it get that cap back on here and call this a fix oh and also uh, putting this landing gear on I treated this with uh, just uh, you know that girl the tape just just so the steel doesn't touch the aluminum I mean it's just unbelievable the amount of corrosion that steel causes with aluminum all right so I think that's it bada boom bada bing I'm done I'm all set that there was something else but forgot but anyways all right so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time